हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल अनफॉक विद डॉक्टर अतहर परवीन सो एज पर द डिमांड ऑफ टी टी एच एस टी आर एंड जी पी एस टी आर एस्परेंट्स आई एम हियर विद द मोस्ट अवेटेड इंग्लिश क्लासेस सो आई हैव प्लान्ड थ्री क्लासेस फर्स्ट टू क्लासेस विल बी फॉर इंग्लिश ग्रामर वेर आई विल बी डिस्कसिंग द मोस्ट एक्सपेक्टेड इंग्लिश ग्रामर multiple choice questions and the third class will be for english pedagogy where i will be discussing the most expected and most important multiple choice questions based on english pedagogy okay so if you watch these classes i am sure that uh, you will get many questions at least related to the questions which i will be discussing in these classes okay and uh, this present class is the first class for english grammar okay so if you have not subscribed to my channel yet please do subscribe and uh, also you will get my telegram channel link in the description below this video you can join that telegram channel you can also interact with me through that telegram channel because there is a group connected to that channel and uh, nowadays so there is a uh, peak preparation on uh, karnataka tet so aspirants you can talk with each other you can also interact with me you can clear your doubts in the telegram channel so please do join the telegram channel and also please share these videos among your friends and uh, other teacher recruitment examination aspirants especially tet and uh, gpstr aspirants and uh, if you are liking my work please do like my videos as well okay so let us start the class so the first most expected multiple choice question of english grammar according to me is this question choose the sentence that has a defining relative clause here in this question they have given four sentences as four options in these sentences you have to choose the correct sentence which is having a defining relative clause so to do this you should be knowing what is a defining relative clause right actually what is a relative clause means it is uh, generally that clause which modifies a noun or a um, phrase of noun and uh, oftenly we introduce it by relative pronoun what are relative pronouns relative pronouns are which that who whom whose okay so in this relative clause there are two types defining relative clause and non defining relative clause defining relative clause is needed to properly identify the noun which it describes okay so here in the four options the first option the money lender who was old and ugly fancied the farmer's beautiful daughter so this is a defining relative clause so here whatever the nouns are mentioned no the money lender he is being described right and then uh, farmer's daughter she is also being described right she is beautiful they are telling okay so this type of uh, sentences wherein you are precisely identifying the noun it describes they are known as defining relative clause okay so non defining relative clause means uh, the second option the sentence is a millionaire who was named thomas walked into a popular bank that's all right so they are not describing thomas just they are telling that uh, he is a millionaire and his name is thomas and he walked into a popular bank they did not discuss more about the noun here okay so it is a non defining relative clause now coming to the third option who is thomas walked into a popular bank it is a incorrect sentence it is not at all a proper sentence it is a wrong sentence next option 4 thomas who walked into a popular bank so this is a context dependent sentence it could be either defining or non defining we cannot say because it is a incomplete sentence we can say okay so here for this question option 1 is the correct answer okay
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन इज देर ए गुड होटल नियर हियर सो द क्वेश्चन इज इज देर ए गुड होटल नियर हियर द मीनिंग ऑफ ए इन द अब सेंटेंस इज सो फर्स्ट ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड द क्वेश्चन दे हैव गिवन वन सेंटेंस एंड दे आर टेलिंग दैट वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ द लेटर ए यूज इन दिस सेंटेंस सी दी ऑप्शन यू विल अंडरस्टैंड दे आर टॉकिंग अबाउट ए गुड होटल ओके एनी वन गुड होटल दे आर टॉकिंग अबाउट ए एनी वन गुड होटल सो ऑप्शन थ्री एनी शुड बी दी करेक्ट आंसर If they wanted to ask about many good hotels, then they would uh, tell that are there good hotels here, correct? So here in this question, they are specifically talking about any one good hotel. Okay, that's why here instead of writing any one good hotel, they have written just a. So usually we Uh, don't like to elaborate sentences right so if i am searching for a hotel i will just ask is there a good hotel here i will not tell is there any one good hotel here i will not make the elaborate sentence okay so all of us are lazy, lazy right we don't want to talk big big sentences we want to talk less and we want the information to be conveyed to the other guy in a simple manner okay so here the meaning of a is any okay next important question choose the grammatically incorrect sentence among the following so for this type of questions you have to read the options very very carefully if you are still not understanding better you translate in your mother tongue and then try to analyze whether the written sentence is correct or no okay so read the first sentence i could not stop laugh when he told jokes so i could not stop laughing right so that should be the correct sentence right i should not stop laughing when he told jokes so this is there in my mind that option 1 would be the incorrect sentence anyway i will read other three options and come back to a final conclusion second option she visited the country at least half a dozen times it looks good this sentence looks good half a dozen means six times dozen means 12 times right so she visited the country at least half a dozen times so this is a correct sentence next he worked as a lecturer for some time this also looks good next dr kutney is always wanted to travel around the world so option 4 is also a correct sentence only so coming back to option 1 this is a incorrect sentence so option 1 is the right answer for this question okay next important question all the 10th class students came through with flying colors so what does this sentence mean it means that all 10th class students have scored very good marks or have cleared the 10th examination something like that they are appreciating about their success that's why they are telling with the flying colors so the question here is here the underlined idiom with the flying colors means so with the flying colors is underlined here so you have to tell the meaning of this idiom it is a idiom with flying colors okay so if you see the options you will understand that they are talking about the success of the 10th class students right so option 4 should be the correct answer so this is a very common idiom actually i also keep using this uh, idiom i always keep telling aspirants to come out with the examination with flying colors so i always mean that you have to achieve a remarkable success in your examination okay now i want to tell you right now also the same thing because we have come across this idiom friends it is my humble request and it is my wish 
that you all should come out with flying colors in any of the examination you write for that matter either it is karnataka tet or it is ctet or it is tet it is tgt pgt or it is hstr or gpstr so i will be the first one who will be very very happy if you come through with flying colors in your examinations so keep in mind that there is someone who will be very happy for you if you clear your examination okay so apart from yourself i will also be very very happy if you clear your examinations okay on this note let's go to next question he is not healthy he is not wealthy these two sentences can be combined as so what they are telling here they are given two different sentences they are telling you to combine it so how you can combine these two sentences you can use neither nor when there are two times not in two different sentences and if you want to combine it you can use neither nor so he is neither healthy nor wealthy okay so i'll give you a few more examples to uh, explain how to combine two sentences see you can use conjunctions coordinating conju conjunction like and is the example right so you can use and to combine two sentences see for example if you have like this two separate sentences are there the sun is shining the birds are singing so both are normal sentences right there is no negativity here correct so you can just use and here and write the sun is shining and the birds are singing you can just combine because here nothing special about uh, sun and birds nothing negativity is there nothing specific word is there so just there is a simple sentence that sun is shining birds are singing so you can use conjunction here and combine these two sentences another example you can use because when you can use because you can use it to show cause and effect like for example if there are two sentences it rained yesterday the ground is wet here second sentence has come because of first sentence the ground is wet because it rained yesterday correct so the second sentence has happened because of first sentence correct so the ground is wet only because it rained yesterday so in this type of sentences you can combine using because the ground is wet because it rained yesterday okay so if you know uh, this uh, neither nor and and because uh, i think that is enough uh, to combine two sentences more than that though i don't think they will ask anything tougher okay next question choose the sentence in which the adverb modifies the verb so here they are telling that there is a adverb which is modifying the verb what is a verb verb is basically a action word right it is a action word anything like you if you are walking singing drinking writing all these are verbs okay now here the question is you have to choose one sentence in which the adverb is modifying the verb first of all though for this you have to find out the verb right where is the verb in all the four options verb is only in option 1 right the old man walked slowly walking is a action word so it is a verb now this walking has been modified by telling that the walking is slow so that is the verb i mean to say adverb okay so that walking is slow so the adverb is slowly the adverb is modifying that walked by telling that the old man walked slowly so option 1 will be the correct answer other three options i don't need to go also because there is no verb at all how will adverb modify it correct is there any action word in other three options the old man is very weak yesterday was a sunday today is a holiday so there is no action word here right okay so if there is a action word 
it means that there is a verb so if there is a presence of verb then only it can modify it can be modified by adverb right okay you understand right next question read the following sentences after reading the following sentences you have to correct the sequence you have to write the correct sequence of the sentences so for this what you have to do you have to read the sentences carefully so read it carefully see how a story starts no there is something introduction in that story first correct then some body is written in the middle then there is some conclusion in the end that is only the uh, actual procedure of write, writing a story right not only story any paragraph or any article anything so keep that in mind and you have to uh, try to find out the correct sequence of the sentences ratnanka was leading the procession so this looks incomplete right next one day ratnanka got a rat made of gold weighing 1 kilo uh, this looks a first sentence okay usually one day once upon a time like that if it starts means that will be the first sentence right so keep in mind that b is the first sentence so see in the options if b is the first sentence in any option yes option 3 so there is no other option where b is the first sentence so things became very easy for us because option 3 only will be the correct answer because b is only the first sentence in case if there are tougher options go for next one it was kept in a silver trap and carried in a procession with pomp this also looks incomplete right when they are talking about a rat made of gold then they should be describing it so that is in sentence d its eyes were made of rubies ears of sapphires and it had a diamond chain round its neck nice in our option 3 d is only the correct sequence next sentence should be d only next should be c because it was kept in a silver trap and carried in a procession with pomp and last one should be a ratnanka was leading the procession okay so what you have to do here in this type of questions in order to write the correct sequence of the sentences first look for a sentence that introduces the topic or event okay so one day once upon a time correct so that will be usually the start starting sentence next identify sentences that provide details or descriptions related to the topic that will be the body in between that will come next arrange the sentences in a way that provides a logical flow of events or ideas okay so these three things if you keep in your mind then you can easily arrange the correct sequence of the sentences so in this also what i would suggest you is two two points are important first you have to see for the introduction line introduction sentence then you have to see for the description sentence then automatically the remaining thing will become the last sentence okay clear right next important question one of the following opening sentences is not suitable for a formal or official letter see read the question carefully one of the following opening sentences is not suitable for a formal or official letter you have to choose the wrong one here so whenever you write a formal or a official letter always start with positivity not only official letter or formal letter even informal letter also any letter for that matter if you are writing never start it with a negativity always be positive and always try to respect the other person whom you are writing the letter to okay see here option 1 i feel honored to write to you very good the second option i have the honor of inviting your attention to very nice next option 3 this is to inform you that this is also very nice option 4 it has been a very long time since you wrote to me this is wrong never write a letter like this to start with okay so this is a wrong uh, opening sentence for any letter okay next question 
while writing a prasi. See, you know what is a prasi? Prasi means one paragraph will be given. You have to read that paragraph and make it into a short paragraph. How much short you should make means you should reduce the length of that paragraph to one by third of the original paragraph. Okay, that is known as prasi writing. So, while writing a prasi, we should reduce the length of the passage to 1 by 3 of the original passage. That is prasi writing. Okay. Next question. Choose the modal auxiliary verb that can be used to express compulsion. So, here shall is the modal auxiliary verb. Actually, modal auxiliary verbs are special verbs that help in expressing things. Like for example, you use the words like possibility, most probability, necessity, permission. So, these type of words are coming under modal auxiliary verbs and they work with the main verb to show how likely or important or needed that proper action is. Okay. For example, the words which we use know like can, could, may, might, must, should, shall, will and would all these are modal auxiliary verbs. Okay. So, here shall is a modal auxiliary verb and uh, even would also can be a modal ob auxiliary verb but uh, when it comes to shall and would, always prefer for shall, okay? Because shall is a very common auxiliary verb, okay? So, in this type of cases, sometimes they also give grace marking also. If there are two correct answers, means they will give grace mark also, okay? Next question. Choose the primary auxiliary verb. So, Till now we saw the modal auxiliary verb. Now we will learn what is a primary auxiliary verb. It is a is. Actually primary auxiliary verbs means they are helping verbs. They are always helping the main verb. For example, be, have, do, is. They are all helping to create the tenses. Either it is a present tense or past tense. Was. Was means it is a past tense. Is means it is a present tense. Okay. So, they are helping to create tenses or they are helping to create questions and uh, negative sentences. Okay. So, is is a primary auxiliary verb. Next question. The grammatically correct sentence among the following. So, you have to see the sentence which is grammatically correct in these four options. The road is uneven and full of pebbles. It looks correct. My father laughed with my plight. It doesn't look correct. I concluded that it will be better to let him carry it. Father have provided for my education. So here, the road is uneven and full of pebbles is the correct sentence. Because uh, second sentence, uh, it should be my father laughed at my plight. At. It will not be with. Okay, at my plight, my father laughed. Okay. And the third sentence is also incorrect because I concluded that it will be better to make him carry it. It's not let. It should be make him carry it. And option four, father have provided for my education. Here, no, it should be has. Father is not a plural, right? Have is usually used after a plural thing. I mean, uh, uh, if there are boys, boys have provided for my education, like that. Or girls have provided. It, there should be a plural word before have. If you are using a singular word, I mean, father is only one, right? Then after father, you cannot write have. You should write has. Father has provided for my education. Okay? So, that's why option one is only the grammatically correct sentence in these sentences. Okay, friends? So, this was uh, the most expected uh, multiple choice questions along with answers and explanations uh, in English grammar useful for TET, useful for TGT, HSTR and GPSTR as well. 
so i think this is my first grammar class in unfog with dr atahar parvin so i am not expert in english okay but uh, i can speak english well but i am not a english teacher so i don't know if my class really helped you or no so if you really liked my class and if you understood what all i have explained in this class please do let me know your feedback in the comment section it will be very helpful for me okay meet you soon with the next part of the english grammar uh, multiple choice questions okay till then all the best take care bye